All right, so in this video, we're going to run our query function again, and we'll see how we can give column names to our results. Let me run a simple statement here. I'm going to pull some data over here, and I'm gonna to go to my master tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract, let's say this column, and I don't know, date, brand, and sales, maybe, A, D, and E. So I'll go here, I'll create my function, Go back to this tab, select my data. I'm gonna start from here. Control shift left and down. F4 to lock it, comma. And we'll do select A, comma D, comma E. And that's it, comma, and one. We have one bro on top, that's why one. So again, I'm gonna add covering basics of query function. If you don't know that, please watch previous videos for that. I'm gonna hit enter. That gives me my result, right? Those three columns. Now at this point, what I want to do, I want to change some of these names. So this should not be date. Let's say it should be sale date. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to the statement. After I did this select A, D, or E, I'm gonna hit a space. And then I'm going to add a label statement. And then after you do the label statement, you follow it by the column you want to rename. So I wanted to rename that date, which was coming from column A. So I'm going to say label A, and I'm going to change that name in single quotes. I'm gonna say start date, hit enter. And now you can see how it's relabeled and it says start date. Now let's say I'm happy with this brand, but I want to do sales to something else. I want to call this total. So again, go back. After I did label A start date, I'm gonna do comma. Now you don't repeat label again. You just follow this label statement with all the columns you want to rename. So after A, the other column I want to rename is column E which is where sales are coming from. So I'm going to say E and then follow with a name. So total, hit enter. And now you can see renamed both of those two different names. So that's a basic example of that. So let's try to do a little more useful example. Let's try to create a pivot out of my data. So I'm going to do select and what I want to do, I want to do some sort of like year to year report or something like that. So to do that, I'll just use year function on my first column date, which is the column A. So I'm going to say year A, and then I want to sum my E column, which is my sales column. And I want to group by that year. So year A again. So if I hit enter, that's my year to year sales. So again, the A column going back here is my date. E column is my sales. So I'm doing here, I'm saying, I want to see the year from that date and I want to sum up sales and I want to group by that year A. So that gives me this. So this is great, the report is good. The only problem is this column names are not that good. So this one says year date. So we would like to change that. So to do this again, we have to do our label. So I'll go back and do label. Now I'm changing this. So what you have to be careful is because now the column is not actually A, it's year A. That's what gives us this column. So I have to do label year A, and I have to give it a label, I'll call it year, and I hit enter, and now that column is called year. So some sales, again, not very helpful, so some E gives me that. So again, not another label, just a comma, some E, and give the name. So I'll call that sales. And there we have it. Renamed our columns, looks good. What is not so good about this is that these numbers should probably be in currency formatting. So for that, there is another statement called format. So I'm gonna go in the end 
after I did my label, I'm going to hit a space and I'm going to now do format. And I do format and I follow that by the name of the column. Again, the column I wanted to change was those dollar amounts, which is in my case, sum E, right? So I'll do sum E and then again in single quotes, I'm going to have to provide the format. Now, this is where if you already know custom formatting is going to be pretty easy for you. Now to do dollar formatting, I'm going to do a dollar sign. I'll do pound, which means like one digit. I do comma because I want comma separators. I'll do three more digits, which is basically this means I want a dollar sign in front and I want a thousand separator. This is my comma. And then because this is a dollar amount, we always want two digits in the end. So I'm going to do dot zero zero. I'm going to hit enter. And now you can see everything translates in currency formatting. Keep in mind, if you were doing some sort of filters, uh, which means your where statements, you can still do them. Just make sure you do your labels and your format in the end. So I can still do select your A, some E, where H equals to, let's say, California, right? Hit enter. And now this should pretty much be our report only filter to California. So again, you can do all of these things like you usually do, only make sure you put your label and format in the end. So moving on to a couple of other examples. So I'm going to create a calculated column, which is going to be the difference between those two columns. So I'll take sales minus cost of goods to get my net. I'll go here and let's create a whole new select statement. So I'll do select E minus F. So let's see if that works. So yep. Yeah. So sales cost of goods. So I'm going to say select A for my date and maybe I'll do column D and then E and F. So let's see what that brings us. So that's date, brand and the difference between sales and cost of goods. I probably want to relabel these things. This one in particular. The logic is going to be the same. After we did this whole statement, we did all the filtering, whatever else you have to do. In the end, chain your label statement. And in this label statement, now you're going to provide the label you want to rename. Now, what I want to rename is this calculated third column. And that column is this thing, which is E minus F. So basically just repeat that whole thing, similar to how I did this before. And after that, provide in single quotes, what do you want the name to be? So I'm going to call this net, hit enter, and now it's named net. Let's zoom in again. So that's my net. If you want to also make sure that net is in currency formatting, again, you go back here and you do your format statement. That net column again is going to come from this E minus F. So we'll repeat that and we'll provide the formatting in single quotes. Again, it's going to be currency. So dollar, pound key, comma, pound, 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 dot, zero, zero. That should give us some currency formatting. So I'm going to hit enter. That gives me my nice currency formatting. I also want to change the date format as well to show you how you format two columns at the same time. So to change my date formatting, which is basically all of this stuff, just go here and again, just comma separate. Don't do format all over again. Just follow with the name of the column. So the name of the column is A. That's my date column, A. So let's say we want it to be four digit year, hyphen two digit month, hyphen two digit day. So it's going to be YYYY hyphen MM hyphen DD. I'm going to hit enter. See, nicely formatted. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with this formatting. So let's say we want month. So if I do M hyphen D hyphen Y, and by the way, instead of hyphen, you could have done just like this slash or space or really anything you want. I'm just going to do a hyphen. So I'm going to hit enter. So see how it says two hyphen 15 hyphen 17. The reason it says two is because I did one M. 
if I do two M's instead of one M, see it's gonna do zero two because we said it needs to be like a two digit month. And the same thing applies to D. If you do one D, if it's like one, two, three, four, five, it's gonna be just one, two, three, four, five. If you do two Ds for one, two, three, four, five, it's gonna be zero, one, zero, two, and so on. Now for year, by default, see one Y gives you just 17. If you want four Ys, which is the full year, just do four Ys, hit enter, that gives you four digit year. Now what's interesting here is that we can also do three M's. If I hit enter, you'll see that what happened is that the month now, instead of saying the number, it says FEB for February. So it's basically short abbreviation of the month name. If you do four M's, it will be the long version of that. So the full name. Now, obviously, when you do this, you probably don't want the hyphen anymore. So you can remove this hyphen and maybe do a comma space for the year and make it look like this. So you're changing the formatting to being a full month and then two digit day and then YYY. If you want the short version of the month, just do MMM. It just works. Some other things that might be interesting is the day. So if you do two Ds, that's your two digit day. If you do another D and hit enter, that's changing that C to WED, which is our Wednesday. So if we do another D, which is four Ds, it's gonna change that to full Wednesday instead of the short version. Now you could also do things like this. I could just keep DDDD, which is basically just the weekday. And I could rename this date column to weekday, right? So I could go here and where do I rename those? In my label statement. And that's my column A. So I would go label C net and then do comma and then A, I would say that should be called weekday. Hit enter and there it is, renamed redone looks completely different now going back here i'm going to just take this name off date was fine and here i'm going to make some changes obviously instead of just doing dddd you could also do any combination of this so let's say mmm for like a three digit month and space dd that would be a two digit day comma space and then I would do Y, 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 four digit year. And then I'm gonna do space hyphen space. And then I'll do D, 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 D all over again. And this should give me that whole, whatever that date is, and then hyphen the day of week in the end of the date. So this is all formatting. The more you know about formatting, the more you're gonna be able to do with this. So just type any formatting. If you understand how formatting works, you should be able to just use this. And again, if you have multiple things you're trying to format, just comma and go for the next one after that. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is what do you do when you have to deal with a race? Let's create an example of that. So I'm gonna delete this. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just run a query from this function and then I'm gonna make it a sub query so it makes it a rave. So I'll go back here and do my function and I'll do my data from my transactions tab. Click here in the corner, control shift left down, F4 to lock it, comma. So I need my select statement. So I'm going to do select and I'll select I'm gonna do a quick pivot table here. So I'll select the state and I'll do total sales, some E and I'll group by my age, which is my state close the code comma I have one header on top close this 
hit enter, this should give me my total by state. So at this point, I'm gonna filter these results to just those that are above $40,000. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna grab this entire statement. So again, if you don't understand subqueries, I have another video that covers this in more detail. But right now, I'm just gonna take this that returns this and I'm just gonna filter it by the second column. So I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna create another query function and my data is gonna be that other function that returns that result table. So I'm gonna do a comma here. Now we have to do our select statement. So I'm going to say select. So I'll still probably do my column one and column two. I'm gonna select those two columns where, because I want to filter by second column, which is all the dollar amount, right? Column two is greater than 40,000. And quote again, comma, and I have one header on top. It's kind of hiding there. We can see it, but it's there. One, close, and hit enter. And that will filter to everything above 40,000. If we want everything above 50,000, we can do that, obviously. Just change this to 50,000. You'll see all the numbers are now above 50,000. So that gets me the results I wanted. Now, the only problem is uh, this one should be named probably sales, and this should be formatted as a dollar amount. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go back. See, this is the last select statement I did, so I'm gonna make that in that select statement. And I'm going to do first a label. And now, because that was, as a subquery, we're looking at column one, column two, instead of saying A, B, C. For that reason, I'm going to say label column two, which is the second column, and I'm gonna call it sales and single code, I'm gonna actually close this so it doesn't get on the way. So single code, so I'm labeling column two sales. I'm gonna hit enter, see that works just fine. And finally, just in the same fashion, do format. And now we format column two again, call two. And by the way, make sure you do uppercase C, otherwise it's not going to work. Column two, and we're gonna format it in currency formatting, so dollar, and then we'll do pound, comma, pound, 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 dot, zero, zero, hit enter, and there we have it. Now, if you want just number formatting, you don't want the currency, obviously just remove the dollar sign. That's our regular number formatting. You should be able to also just remove this double zeros right here and leave the period on. So if I hit enter, see that will kind of cut my decimal points in the end. So if I go back and remove that period, that will be a little nicer. We don't want that period. So now we're dropping the pennies and all that stuff, rounding it up. If you want, you can do that too. Obviously, you leave the dollar sign in front of it if you want it to be with a currency. So you can do all kinds of stuff like this with your formatting to make it work for you. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.